I was talking last time about indexes and it got me to thinking about a problem that you can get in C Sharp with both indexes and properties that means the careful rules of encapsulation that you've put around your class can get broken and you can lose your data integrity. Now, the example I'm going to show you here is related to a number of sports that you'll get at the Olympics and that sort of thing, things like figure skating and diving, also things like ballroom dancing, basically where you have a panel of judges who each give a score to the performance. And so you'll have them sitting there holding up a little card or doing it electronically, whereby they can give a number of scores. And the thing about this is it varies in two ways. It varies from sport to sport on the number of people you have on the panel and it also varies in terms of the minimum and maximum scores that they can give. So in something like figure skating for example, somewhat oversimplified, but you would have a panel of nine judges and they could give scores in the range one to six. So let's have a look at the code I've got for making all that work. And what I've got here is just this class called scores and we can see that we have a constructor that takes the count, so that's going to be the number of judges we have on the panel, and then the min and the max score that they're allowed to use. And so if we look at our program, I've set this up for skating. As I say, somewhat oversimplified, but we have nine judges on the panel and the scores can be the range one to six. And then what do we do with that when they're passed in? Well, we create an array that is just that many items, integers for the scores, and then we also set up the minimum and the maximum. Then what I've also got in here is simply a property that gives us the maximum score. And the reason for that is that is our sanity check. Because obviously if we've said that there is a maximum score of 6, then we should never see this exceeding 6. And if we do, we know we've got a problem in terms of our data integrity. And then to actually access this, we have an indexer. And so you can see I've got an indexer with a getter and a setter. In the getter, we check to make sure that the index is within the range of our number of scores in the array. If not, we throw an exception. Now, actually, obviously, we know an array does that check for you anyway, but it's just there to make it absolutely clear what's going on. And then in our setter, we have that same check to make sure we're inside the range of the index. But then additionally, we have a second check to make sure that the value we're setting is within the range that are allowed for the scores in this particular sport. Now, if this were a property rather than an indexer, then you wouldn't need to have that check for the index being in range because there wouldn't be an index, but you would still need to have this check to make sure that whatever the value you're setting is within whatever the rules may be. And it's that one actually that's there in both properties and indexes that we're going to see gives us the problem. But for now, it's all looking pretty good. So if we go back to our program, we can see we've created this skating collection with nine scores in the range one to six, and we can use the setter on the indexer to give each of those a value. We write out the maximum. So if I run that up, we just see that skating has a maximum score of six. And if I did anything wrong, so if I say try to access the 18th element, that would be out of range. And so we get the exception thrown and it's just saying index out of range. So we've got exception handling around that. Or if I were to have it in the valid range, but give it an invalid value, then we get a slightly different exception saying it's out of range. So that was showing us the two that we have here, the one out of range for the length, the one out of range for the score values. So all looking pretty good. And in terms of that simple class it is. Now, of historical interest is the reason that indexes are like they are in C sharp is the equivalent was really badly done in C++, one of the fundamental problems in C++, and would give you problems in this sort of situation. So just out of interest, I've knocked up a very similar class in C++ that we've got here. So let's just set that as the startup project. And so if we go in here, we've got really very much the same thing. So we've got this scores with a constructor that takes the count, the min and the max, creates an array of that many elements and stores the other information. Then we've got a get max score. So exactly the same idea as we had with the C sharp version. But then we've got what is a bit different because in C++ we don't, as I say, have indexes. What we have is operator overloading, which we also have in C sharp. But in C++ you overload the square brackets operator or the subscript operator, depending on what you want to call it. 
and that is the closest equivalent we have of an index. So we say we've got our operator square brackets, takes a parameter of index, returns the int, and there we've got our bounds checks, so we're making sure we're within the valid range of the array, and if we are, we return it. But that is effectively just doing the get, that is reading the value. What we don't have in C++, because we don't have indexes, is any means of doing the set. And the closest we have is what we've got here, is we have an overload of the square brackets operator, overloaded on the fact it's not const, and that returns a reference to an int or whatever you have inside your collection. And the code in there looks exactly the same, but because we're returning a reference, we can assign back into it. And so if we look at the program for this one, looks very similar. There we've got our skating object, same values, popping in some scores, print out the maximum. If we run that, we can see we're getting that maximum six. Again, if I were to go outside the range of possible values, try and put in an 18, then we get the catch of that exception and we're told the problem. But what we don't have, and this is the big problem in C++, we don't have that second level of checking because once we've returned the reference, what I'm doing here is assigning into that reference. So I'm assigning straight into that element in the array that we've got here. And there's no opportunity to do that additional check. So here, if I run that, I'm getting a maximum score of 14, which goes against the rules of what I wanted. Not good at all. So that's a fundamental problem in C++ that seems to have been fixed in C Sharp. But actually, without too much effort at all, you can reintroduce exactly that problem into C Sharp, and it happens quite often. Let me show you how to do that. So we'll just set the C Sharp back at the startup project, and I'm going to make a slight change here. Rather than just recording the scores in this sport, whatever it may be, I'm going to introduce this simple little class called Panelist. So the idea is we don't just want to record the scores, we want to record the name of the judge who gave the particular score. So I've got this panelist class that groups together the name and the score. And then I've got a slightly different collection called a panel. The main difference being the panel now has the array of panelists rather than the array of simple scores. Same sort of thing again, we've got the minimum and the maximum and we return the maximum score. And then our indexer has to be slightly different in that it returns a panelist rather than simply the score. On the getter, we still need to check we're within the bounds of the array and return the member. But then the slight difference is, as well as doing that on the setter, we also have to have the check on our value.score because that's the panelist and that's the score for the panelist. So it all looks very, very similar, just a slight complexity that we've got the names as well. But if I go to the program and let's comment out what we had there and then introduce what we've got here. So this time, I've changed it from figure skating to ballroom dancing, but it doesn't matter at all. So in ballroom dancing, let's say you have four judges on the panel and they can return something in the range one to 10. And again, we can use the setter on this panel to set in some values and there we've set all that up and we return the maximum score. So let's run that one and we can see the maximum score is 10 and we could start making some changes to that. So if I say copy all of that, and if I were to try to change number three to having a score of 18, then we see we get the out of range. And similarly, if I were to change that to the wrong number of panelists, we're still getting both of those errors. But what I've done now is so easy to cheat because what I could do is this. I could say dancing three dot score equals 27. And if I run that, we get the max score of 27. So we don't get the exception thrown that we should have done. And so we've breached encapsulation. We've got a business rule that we thought we'd applied that the maximum score can't be above 10. And without any problem, we're getting that. The reason that that's happening is because actually with this new version, I'm doing almost exactly the same as I had in the C++ because What's happening here, that is calling the setter because I'm writing in a new panelist. But here, I'm only 
calling the getter. So dancing element three gets me that panelist. And then I'm modifying the score on that panelist. And because we're a collection of panelists and panelist is a class, a reference type, that means that the getter in here returns a reference and we can modify that reference and there is no checking on that at all. Now you might say, well, shouldn't we have on the panelist itself put in a setter in here that verified that the score is in range? And that might work in some cases, but it's not a good solution here, of course, because what that maximum score is, is not a property of the panelist. It's a property of the panel because we set it up here in the constructor because it's different from figure skating to ballroom dancing and whatever. So we want to be applying our logic in here, but we're bypassing it because it's actually the get that's being called at that point, not the set. So how can we fix it? Well, there's a couple of things we can do. One is that we can simply change the panelist from being a class, a reference type, to being a struct, a value type. And as soon as we do that, if we now go back to the program, we're being told that that is illegal. You cannot assign into the score property. We can still assign the entire thing in there because that's calling the setter, that's fine. But we're not allowed to modify through a getter on a value type, on the struct. The reason being, if you think what's happening now, when we do the get on dancing three, then it does the get, but it returns now a copy of the panelist. It has to be a copy because this is a value type, so we pass by value. The previous problem was we were returning by reference, but we can do that. That's a copy, and because you're trying to modify a copy, C Sharp understands that and immediately gives you the error. So we can block that out completely, and that would force us, if we want to try and change the score, we have to do it with an assignment of the entire object, which we know if we set that one to 27, that one is going to give us the error. So it's forced us to go through the setter and therefore the setter can apply its logic. Just as a slight aside, we can, as I discussed in an earlier video, actually return value types by reference. So if we really wanted to, and it's not a good idea here, but we could change that to public ref panel list we then have to return by ref as well. And you'll notice if you're returning by ref, you can't have a setter, so we'll get rid of that. And now actually that is compiling, but we've reintroduced the error because we're allowing that value 27. Because basically what we're now doing here is again, basically what we had in the C++, we are deliberately returning a value by reference and therefore we're using the getter to change the data. So I say that as an aside, you'd never want to do that because it just reintroduces the problem. What we want to do is have the struct returning by value and therefore we get the compilation error, which is the best kind of error to get. Of course, that does force us to have a value type and there may be other reasons why we want to have a reference type for our panelists rather than a value type. So the other thing you can do, and it's, a solution to so many problems, as you've seen on various previous videos, you can have an immutable type. So we could make our panelists still a reference type, but make it immutable. And the way that we can do that, or the easiest way, is to have a record. So again, you can look at the previous videos, records came in in C Sharp 9, I think it was. But what I could do here is simply have this record where we can pop in those two items. That will make a read-only record. Comment that out. And then that will require a slight change in the program code because of the way that's being constructed. So we'd have to change all this to just using the constructor. So that's all working okay up to a point. So we should still see that's working fine but it's now not allowing us to set the score because the score is immutable. We can't change it at all. So that would avoid the problem, but still allow us to have a reference type. But it's not quite as good as having the struct, I wouldn't say, because the struct itself was not immutable. We could still change it. It's just that we had it in such a way that we could still enforce the rules of the panel about the score being in range.
So there we have it, a problem you get in C Sharp on both indexes and properties, where if you have a getter on either of those that's returning a reference type, then the client code can modify that returned reference directly rather than having to go through the setter, which is where you've put your business logic and your restrictions. We saw a couple of solutions. One is that we can use a value type, use a struct, and the other one is if we use a reference type, we can make it immutable, and either way, they therefore can't bypass the setter on our collection. But either way you solve it, it's important to be aware that this sort of problem can occur and that your encapsulation may be cheated. So, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, do click like, do subscribe, and I'll see you next time.